when people hear we might have to social distance until 2022, um, that's obviously pretty alarming considering the effects on the economy that we've already seen. I think one thing we need to keep in mind is with this study, they were not looking at the effects of vaccinations or interventions. And so this is assuming that we don't have a vaccine, we don't have good treatment options, really just looking at the behavior of the virus, the seasons, and the people. Now, one thing the study showed us is that the social distancing behaviors can be intermittent. So you don't have to continuously socially distance. You can really kind of follow the peaks and troughs of the, of the virus itself to guide your behaviors. They looked at other coronaviruses, the ones that cause common colds, and they very much have a seasonal pattern. Um, and so did the SARS virus showed us something similar. So if this follows a seasonal pattern, the second wave will probably come sometime in the fall, which means that around that time, we'll have to think about starting to socially distance aggressively again, if the vaccine is not there. If our immunity goes away, which we don't know, but we think it might based on other coronaviruses, which wane in a year, ours in two years, MERS in three years, if this goes away, we're back to square one if we don't have a vaccine. So all of this really kind of drives that point home that we need a vaccine, like now, as soon as possible. Otherwise, we're going to be doing this for a long time. This Otherwise, this thing. completely changes the way that Our we life. live. Forever, yeah. Certainly a lot to think about. So without a vaccine, even in those summer months where things are expected to calm down a little bit, the study suggests that we still need to social distance, not necessarily like we're doing now to this extent, but we will need to do something kind of like how Governor Polis is suggesting things will look when things reopen here in Colorado, where you can go to a restaurant, but not as many people will be allowed to be inside of it. The study also emphasizes the importance of widespread surveillance testing, a way to track the virus and see how it's spreading and what it's doing. And the importance of that, Natasha, is that would be used to figure out when we can safely relax social distancing guidelines and ramp them back up again. And we know that that is another factor in the governor's decision to reopen our economy. Right now, it's set to reopen August, or actually, not August hopefully not August, right. uh, it's set to reopen April 26th. Wow. But one of the things he's considering is if we're gonna be able to test and do widespread testing. And right now CDPHE says they don't have the resources to be able to do that. Yeah, surveillance testing. I mean, we've known that that's something big in other countries as well, and it seems to be working. And if that's what it takes, uh, definitely worth looking into. All right, Liz, really interesting. Thanks for um, adding that. We're gonna go to Mar